What is the best mulch for your garden? It's important to understand that there are two types of gardens and each one has a preferred type of mulch. There's the vegetable garden and the ornamental garden, which is everything else. If you're interested in mulch for a vegetable garden, have a look at my other video and I'll put a link to it at the end of this one. So what is the best mulch for an ornamental garden? If I had to pick just one mulch, it would be this, wood chips. There are some important things to understand about mulch. Once you understand those, you'll be able to make the right choice. And this may not be the right choice for every situation. So let's first define an ornamental garden. That's really any place that has permanent plantings. So this could be trees, shrub borders, perennial beds, any place where you have a permanent plant that you're not digging in all the time. Mulch does several important things for a garden. It keeps the soil cool and roots grow better in cool soil. It holds moisture in the soil, so you have to water less often. Ideally, that mulch slowly decomposes and adds organic matter to the soil, improving the health of your soil. But from my point of view, the most important thing mulch does is it keeps weeds down. But a good mulch will do all of those things. Now, what is the best mulch for your ornamental bed? Well, that probably depends on where you live. A good mulch will do the four things I just mentioned, and it'll be inexpensive. A lower price means that it hasn't been trucked too far around the country, which is good for the environment. And of course, a lower price is good for your pocketbook. So just because I like wood chips doesn't mean that's the best choice where you live. So let's go through some other options for mulch. One option that is popular are stones. The advantage of stones is that in some locations they're very easy to get. They last a long time. You never have to replace them. The downside to stone is that it doesn't add organic matter to the soil. It doesn't make your soil any better. However, if you live in an area that's fire prone, it may be your best option, especially around the house. Another very common mulch is compost. Now compost is great for soil building. It's readily available. You can make your own. The problem with compost is that it's not your best choice for keeping weeds down. In fact, compost is a great seed bed. So once the seeds land on the compost, they'll germinate and have a great place to grow. And that's why I don't really like it for a mulch. It's great underneath the mulch. Put that down first and cover it with mulch. But compost is not great as a mulch. The same argument can be made for leaf mold or chopped up leaves. Very easy to get in the fall and it's great for the garden. It may not be quite as bad as compost as far as seed growth goes, but seeds will still germinate in it and grow. I do use leaves naturally and wherever the leaves fall I leave them and it does help and they degrade over a summer so they need to be replaced every year. There are a number of byproducts from our food processing system. So things like peanut shells and almond shells. Any byproduct that's organic and is fairly hard will make a good mulch. But what I don't like to see is people buying that material in bags and having it shipped way across the country just so you have that particular mulch. So we don't have much of a pecan industry in Ontario, so I would never buy that here. But if I lived in an area where pecans are processed regularly, that could be a really good inexpensive option. The other thing to keep in mind with mulch is you generally need a fair amount. The pile behind me is about seven yards. Started out as 10 and I've used some up. That's not a lot of mulch for my large garden. So when you're getting mulch, try to buy it in bulk. Don't buy these little bags. Another mulch that's popular is bark chips. Now they tend to repel water quite a bit and some people complain that they're not a good option for that reason. I don't really understand that. The water will still run off them and into the soil, and, and that could actually be a good thing. In fact, one of the downsides of many mulches is that if you have a light rain, it doesn't penetrate the mulch and get into the soil. So once the soil below the mulch is dry, it can be difficult to wet. You either need a heavy rain or you need a longer watering period to get it through the mulch 
into the soil. The good thing though is that once that water is down there, it lasts a long time compared to soil that isn't mulched. How about weed barrier? I mean, that's a product that's specifically sold to mulch soil. Well, it's an absolutely horrible product. First of all, you have to put it in place before you start the garden. I can't imagine cutting it into little strips and fitting it around perennial plants. So you put it down when you start the garden. The problem is it's ugly. So most people put some other mulch on top. So now that mulch decomposes. Now you have an organic layer on top of the weed barrier. And in two or three years, full of weeds, they're really hard to dig out because the roots go through the weed barrier. The other thing that happens is that the roots from trees and shrubs, they go up into the weed barrier. So when you try to remove this thing, you do a lot of damage to your plants. Weed barrier is great the first year or two. I think that's why landscapers like it. But experienced gardeners know that you should never use weed barrier in the garden. How about cardboard and newspaper? I hear a lot of people using that. Now again, that's a great product when you're starting a garden and you want to kill all the grass or weeds in that bed. Put down the cardboard or newspaper. It's called lasagna garden. Cover it with soil or compost. Let everything die down and then plant. That's a good idea. But once you've got a planting in place, how do you use these little bits of cardboard and fit them in the right spot? And then you have to cover them with something anyway. Otherwise, your garden looks like crap. So I don't see it as a good mulching option in an established bed. So that leaves us with wood mulch. Now, there's not just one type of wood mulch. So there's a few things I'd like to point out about this material so that you pick the best one for your garden. A lot of wood mulch now is colored, and you get it in black and red and brown. And people like that because of the color. The first concern is the dye that's used to make that mulch. Is it harmful? And the answer is no. That is a vegetable dye, and it will just decompose in the garden. There's no worry about the color. But keep in mind that when you buy products that are colored like that, somebody has to do that. We have to manufacture the dye. We have to process the wood chips. None of that is good for the environment. So I recommend wood chips that have not been dyed. The other reason for doing that is that a lot of the dyed material is very fine. They do that for a couple reasons. One is that people like a fine looking mulch. The second reason is that they can use all kinds of crappy wood. A lot of that comes from homes that are demolished, and so it has all kinds of stuff in with the wood. So they chip it very fine, so you really can't see what you're getting. A much better option is real arborist wood chips. And that's what I have here. It's quite chunky. You want larger pieces of wood in it. These pieces will last longer, so you get more value from your mulch. That wood mulch that shredded very fine doesn't last very long, so you're constantly having to replace it. This stuff will last two to three years before you have to replace it. If you can find a friendly arborist, he might just drop it off for free. They have to dispose of it, and in a lot of locations, they have to pay dumping fees to get rid of it. So they'd rather bring it to your house for free and dump it there. So those are your options for mulching the garden. So now let's answer a couple other questions that you might have. When should you mulch? Well, I mulch whenever I have it. That's the best time. But if I had an option, I would mulch very early in the year. The plants are small. It's easy to put the mulch around them. And that just makes the whole process easier. Then the plants grow up around the mulch and you have a nice looking garden. I'm doing it in late June and it's very hard to get mulch around the plants because I can't even see much of the soil. So it is a little more work that way. Late fall is also a good time to mulch. But the best time is when you have it, especially if you can get it for free. So I hope that's been helpful. I would not garden without mulch. I like to keep all of the soil covered with something. And my choice is a good arborist wood chip. If you have a vegetable garden, I do something completely different. And I explain that in my next video, which is in the top right-hand corner. Happy gardening.